Welcome back. In the previous video, we had a look at micro task queues and their order of priority when executing asynchronous code. If you haven't watched that video, please do so before continuing. If you have watched that video, let's proceed to understand about the timer queue in this video. Before we run our experiment, I want to mention to queue a callback function into the timer queue, we can use either the set timeout function or the set interval function. I will be using set timeout for the rest of this series. Here is the syntax for your reference. The first argument is the callback function and the second argument is the delay. Let's head back to VS Code and run our experiment. For our third experiment, we are going to queue up tasks in both microtask queues as well as the timer queue. And for this experiment, I'm going to continue from where we left off. We have three process.nextic calls, followed by three promise.results. We have two additional process.nextic calls from within the callback functions. If we run this code, we see the output and an explanation of this output was already discussed in the previous video. But it should be clear that our code snippet currently queues up callback functions in both the microtask queues. Next tick, as well as promise. Now let's queue up a few callbacks in the timer queue. At the top, I'm going to copy paste three function calls to set timeout. All of them have a delay of zero milliseconds, which implies the callback functions are queued up as soon as each set timeout statement is executed on the call stack. I want you to now pause for a minute and try figure out the output. All right, if I now run node index, we see the same output as the last video, and then we have three more log statements at the end. And these log statements correspond to the three set timeout functions. Set timeout one, two, and three. From this, we have our inference for the third experiment. Callbacks in the micro task queues are executed before callbacks in the timer queue. Pretty straightforward to understand if you've been following along from the previous two videos. But let me also quickly help you with the visualization. When the call stack executes all the statements in our code snippet, we end up with three callbacks in the next tick queue, three in the promise queue, and three in the timer queue. Now there is no further code to execute and control enters the event loop. Here, next tick queue gets priority, followed by promise queue, which is then followed by timer queue. First callback from the next tick queue is dequeued and executed, which locks a message to the console. This is followed by the second callback, which also logs a message. The second callback contains an additional call to process.nextTick, resulting in a new callback in the next tick queue. Execution continues, and the third callback is dequeued and executed, which logs a message as well. Finally, the newly added callback also is dequeued and run on the call stack. This results in the fourth log statement in the console. Now that the next tick queue is empty, event loop proceeds to the promise queue. First callback is dequeued and executed on the call stack, printing a message to the console. Second callback also has a similar effect. In addition to the log statement, it also adds a callback to the next tick queue. Next, the third callback in the promise queue is executed resulting in the next log message. At this point, the promise queue is empty and the event loop checks the next tick queue to see if there are new callbacks. There is one and the same is executed. Now, both the microtask queues are empty. Event loop moves on to the timer queue. We have three callbacks and each of them are dequeued and executed on the call stack one by one. This will print set timeout one, two, and three. 
Hopefully, you're able to follow along. All right, so far, the order of priority is next to queue, then the promise queue, and then the timer queue. Let's now proceed to experiment number four. The code will pretty much remain the same as experiment number three, except for one change. We are going to slightly modify the callback function passed to the second set timeout function. I'm going to copy paste the code. So we still have the lock statement. This is set timeout two. But after the lock statement, we have an additional call to process.nextDeck. This will contain a callback function which logs this is the inner next tick inside said timeout. Now, for the second time in this video, I would like you to pause and try figure out the output. All right, let me now run node index. You can pause and verify the output, but let me tell you that there is no change except for the last part, which is to do with set timeout. This time, we can see that the inner next tick callback function inside set timeout is executed before the final set timeout callback function. And this is our inference from the fourth experiment. Callbacks in microtask queues are executed in between the execution of callbacks in the timer queue. Let me help you with visualization. This time though, I'm going to skip to the part where callbacks in the microtask queues have already been executed. We start at a point where three callbacks are queued up in the timer queue. Now, the first callback is dequeued and executed on the call stack, resulting in set timeout one message in the console. Event loop proceeds and runs the second callback as well. This will result in set timeout two message in the console. But this will also queue up a callback function in the next tick queue. And as we just learned, after every callback execution in the timer queue, the event loop goes back and checks the microtask queues. It will check the next tick queue and identify there is a callback to be executed. So that is dequeued and executed on the call stack, resulting in the inner next tick message in the console. And to answer a question you might potentially have, yes, this check did happen after the first callback as well. But the microtask queues were empty and thus did not make a difference. Anyway, now that the microtask queues are empty, control goes back to the timer queue. The last callback is executed, resulting in set timer three message in the console. Hopefully the inference makes sense. As an exercise, please do add a promise.resolve statement and verify that the previous inferences still hold good. All right, for the fifth experiment, which would be the final experiment in this video, let's run three simple set timeout statements. So comment out the existing code and at the top, add three calls to set timeout with different delays. One second, 500 milliseconds and zero seconds. Pause and try figure out the output. This should be straightforward as it involves only the timer queue. All right, if I now run node index, we see set timer three first, followed by two and then one. From this, our inference is that timer queue callbacks are executed in FIFO order. First in, first out. The set timeout callback with the least delay is the first one to be queued up and is the first one to be executed by the event loop. And I'm sure this one does not need any visualization. But I hope you now have a good idea of the order of priority of synchronous code plus microtask queue callbacks plus timer queue callbacks. One point I would like to mention here is that the timer queue is technically not a queue. It is a min heap data structure. 
But for our understanding, thinking it is a queue makes the process simpler. All right, in the next video, let's understand about the next queue, which is the IO queue. Thank you for watching. Please do consider subscribing to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.